just seen what looked like a tent show um, off the far bank. And when the rods has gone off again, got into the weed, managed to bully him through. You f you absolute f How has that happened? There she is in all her glory, the Nash Power Barrow, absolute mega bit of kit. I really, really highly recommend you to get one of these. It's actually my fourth bite and the kettle's boiling now, so I'm gonna have a coffee. And they've got to pack all this lot down. Right, welcome to a new video. We are back on the bank. I've got the kit there. That is the awesome Nash Power Barrow, the big boy. And um, it's made getting my kit from the car park to the lake much easier it's a mega mega bit of kit if you can afford one or if you can get older one i highly recommend them brilliant bit of kit now i am on Hawcott links in the cotswolds and um doing something a bit di ugh, doing something a bit different today so i've come up onto the what is called the tench lake now i think it's got a few carp in there apparently it's going to have quite a few tench i think and i am actually mainly going to be tench fishing but I'm using basically scaled down carp gear, so I've got a good chance of catching some carp as well if they're in the area. Now, I've never seen this lake, let alone fished it before, and it is stunning bit of water. It's actually a lot, lot nicer than the actual main lake itself. Now, I've walked around, um, I've actually been stopped by a few guys. There are, I think, three blokes on the main lake that recognized, um, recognized me from these videos, so that was cool, I had a bit of a chat, so delay me a little bit, but it's always nice to chat to people that actually appreciate watching the videos and and like the channel so that's pretty cool but um one of them had had um, a 31 and a, a 20 i think he had so um looks like they're feeding all right on the main lake at the moment but uh yeah we're on this bit of water anyway look at that that is actually really really picturesque that it's a really nice lake i don't think it gets fished anywhere near as much as the main lake there's obviously not the same stamp of fish in here but i'm after the tench and apparently there's quite a few in here so i've seen a lot of bubbling just straight out in front of this swim the wind is going down into the bank down here which is the um bank closest to the main lake and um yeah it looks really really good i mean this is literally the first swim i've come into and i can see quite a large portion of the lake from here there's a couple of guys further up this bank sort of in the middle of the lake um it looks like there's a load of reeds that go out go out into the um out into the water which looks pretty nice but um there's a bit of a wind on we've got some stormy weather forecast i've only got till tomorrow morning as i have got to go to work tomorrow so it's kind of an overnight really but i thought i fancied doing a bit of tension i've been trying to get out and do a bit and um it's not really been going to plan so hopefully on this session i can actually have a few and put a few fish in the net so um anyway i'm going to get the uh, lead and rod out have a lead around see what's out in front of me i think location's pretty much done i've seen plenty of fish shown out in front of here now i could go on to this bank there's a swim over here with the wind going straight into it but um you've got obviously all the other guys behind you over there whereas in this swim um it's nice quiet you haven't got anyone behind you and um you kind of fish in sideways into the wind which is a little bit awkward but um i've seen loads of bubbling in front of this swim so it makes sense to get in here so um i would imagine a tench which is perfect so um anyway it looks like it's about to pull down so i'm gonna have a quick lead around um if this rain comes down i'm gonna have to set the bivy up but um anyway let's get some uh let's get a lead rod out have a little find um have a little cast around find a few spots and um yeah let's see if we can have a few Right, so as I was saying, first book call is leading around. Now, I've already been leading around for just a, just shy of 30 minutes. And all I can say is, this place is weedy. But after 30 odd minutes of casting relentlessly and bringing back loads and loads and loads of weed, I have found an area I can present on. It's not very far out, I'm not quite sure how many wraps that's going to be, but it's quite close in. Um, there's quite a lot of bubbling going on beyond the zone that I found, but uh, you, you have to be able to present in gravel pits. And basically I've put a 
I put about 10 casts down the same line now at that spot and it's it's hitting it the bottom lovely every time so it's definitely a decent spot it's not too far from where the fish were fizzing either so I'd say it's probably got a, possibly a lightish bit of weed covering on it it's not bringing back much actually on the spot it's um as I reel the rod in it's catching on the weed bedder my side of it basically closer to the bank but um it trundles along quite uh oh no oh no it's kind of a clip you have got to be joking you f you absolute f how has that happened Typical that is, I think, oh, we'll wrap it up. No, I did a bit to camera first. What an idiot. What I was trying to say is I've just spent half an hour leading around, clipped up lovely, and I've now managed to um, pull it out of the clip. I have cast it. Quite a few times, so hopefully... find it again. I've got a reasonable idea of where it is. Oh, I don't know. That's, that feels too small. Ah, that's it. Oh, that is the, yeah, that's it. Right. Let me wrap that up. Let's do one more cast. Right, so. Side. It's got me bang in the middle. Right, so I've spent probably about 40 minutes now leading around. The reason for that is I spent a half hour leading around, I then found a spot. Um, I then managed to somehow unclip the uh, the rod. So I've had to um, recast a few times to find it again. But we've reclipped and boom we are on the money it's a very 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 small little strip of gravel surrounded by some silt amongst a huge amount of weed but um yeah i've spent a good sort of 30 minutes initially having a good lead around all across the swim and the only spot i found is basically banging the center of the swim which is what i would expect because that's the kind of place that the average angler is probably going to cast and that's probably seen a bit of bait i would have thought it's a very very small little spot um, but I can't really find anything anywhere else, so I'm going to have to just put two rods on there. I think you can use three, but that's probably not going to fit three rods. It might do if I can get really accurate, but I think initially I'm going to just try and get two on there. And I might just um, put a solid bag in the margin under one of, the, one of these trees just for an opportunist bite, potentially. But um, anyway, that's taken me ages. But um, what I was going to talk you through is um, what I'm using. So I'm using my 10, set, uh, 10 foot rods today. And so I've got a 10 foot spod. This is the um, Nash scope. Uh, it's one of the original ones, or well, Mark II models. Uh, four and a half pound test curve. Obviously you need every rod for your um, feature finding. I also use it for spodding, so I can just put a spod through it on there now. The reel was actually quite a cheap reel, so which would dispatch. I've had a couple of these over the years. A few of them have blown off on me. Um, I think this is my third one. But for my smaller setup, where I'm not fishing so far, this is absolutely brilliant. It's actually a pretty decent workhorse of a reel, and it's pretty cheap. On my bigger setup, which is my big Fox X5s, which are 13 foot, I've actually got a C reel, um, a C casting reel, which is a Daiwa um, Surf 45. 
um, which is an absolute mega reel. So I use that for my, my longer range fishing. But for on here, I'm just using this setup. It's absolutely perfect for the job. And um, yeah, I've just found that spot. So what we need to do is get the rods all wrapped up, get some bait in there and then get home set up and um, have something to eat because I am absolutely starving. And it looks like it's going to rain. Right, I'm going to just wrap them up. So I've chosen a brilliant spot right in front of a puddle which is obviously the kind of place you want to choose to do this. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, just over ten. No, that's basically 10.1, 10, 10 so it's literally going to have to be bang on that, because it is quite a small little spot, so I'll bring my two little markers, I'll bring my two little markers down and basically put them at either side of the rod tip, and that's where I'm going to bring the rod each time to clip it up. Oh. Alright, let's roll that in. So, 10.1. It's a nice easy little flick. Happy days. Right, let's get the other rods wrapped. Right then, rod number one getting wrapped so I've decided I'm probably gonna have to use leg clips because it is so weedy it's not my preferred tactic for tench uh, right two three four five six seven eight Nine, ten. Ooh. and a bit. Make sure that's actually there. Right, clip that up. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna have to use leg clips because it's so weedy out there. Um, my other option is probably using a solid bag, but just to start with, I'm gonna put two rods on leg clips on that spot, as the chances are, if I get a fish, it's gonna go into that weed. So if the lead in on there, it's gonna make life a lot, lot easier. So um, I was hoping to be able to use maggot feeders and a few things like that just to be able to keep recasting a little bit and build up a bit of a feed, but I've not been able to find a big enough area to um, make that worth my time. So we're going with the leg clips, a little two ounce lead. I'm fishing the mono straight through. You're not allowed any leaders or anything on these lakes, so I'm just fishing straight through, direct to the leg clip, strongest way I can do it, and um, a little two ounce uh, lead on there. So, right, that's one done. I'm gonna wrap them both first so that then I can chuck them out at the same time and get them nice and accurately on that little spot. So, uh, right. Let's go and get the other rod out. It'd have been a lot easier if I just got my wellies. Right, second rod then. Two, three. Basically spot on, excellent. Right, 
right, that's the two rods all wrapped up, both with leg clips. Let's uh, get some rigs and I'm get my there. Right, so rig wise, I'm actually using some of the um, Guru pre tied rigs. So these are four inch, designed for like your method feeders, flatbed feeders, that sort of thing. Um, 12 pound size 10 hooks. Um, these are quite heavy gauge hooks and they've got speed stops on so they're easy to um, be able to change the rig. Now, because obviously these are 12 pounds so they're very strong and they're going to work really well on the little leg clips. So it's essentially like a scaled down carp setup really. I'm going to put a couple of little um, wafter rigs on. Find what I need. Um, yeah, I'm going to put a couple of little wafter rigs on and uh, go from there. Which one needle I need, I can't actually find. I'll just use that for now. Basically, with these speed stops, you can just push them straight through. So, hopefully, they go through okay and they won't crack, crack the bait because that is the only concern I've got. They are quite large, but um, the only other option is to use um, like a bayonet rig. I do like using those as well. But we'll see how we get on. Right, there we go then. So we've got, so we've got two little leg clips, two ounce leads, four inch rig, little wafter, 12 pound mono hook length, and a size um, 10 hook. So uh, anyway, that's that done. And let's get them out on the spot and then put a little bit of bait on it. I'm not going to go crazy with the bait because I've only done a short session. Um, but I am going to bait little and often, so I'm going to keep sort of topping the spot up with a spot or two before, probably a few times before I go to bed. And um, obviously if I get any fish, I will do the same or obviously keep topping it up every time I get a fish. And um, go from there, hopefully we'll have a few. So, right, I need to get some rods sorted. Some bank sticks. I think I've got... Some bank sticks in here somewhere. Yeah, that'll do. Job's a good one. <clears throat> I get them pushed in. So like I've said, I'm just gonna put two on that spot. Now I don't know how easy it's gonna be to get bank sticks in here. It's always the way, the one time you, you think, oh I won't need a pod. Oh yeah, I should have bought a pod. Hopefully I can get a back rod rest in. Come on. Get in there. Nice. Got a jammy giraffe in the way. If anyone's wondering why I've got a giraffe on my uh, buzzer bar is because Hugh got me it to try and uh, help me get bites. He seems to think I need more help, even though, let's be honest, I'll probably catch more than him, but uh, yeah, we won't talk about that and start crying. Net-wise, I've just got my carp net because at the end of the day, there's a good chance I could catch a carp. There's a few in here, although I don't think they're too big. Hope it doesn't look anything too big anyway, because um, it's going to be an absolute nightmare trying to get it through the weed with the uh, lighter kit. But, uh, why is that not going in there right? These scope nets, they're good, but they're not great. I definitely prefer my, uh, my fox net. Right, sorted. Right, let's get these rods out. Right, first one. I'm, just, I'm not going to put anything with it, I'm just going to put it out as a single to start with. Hopefully with the little leads, 
we shouldn't get caught up in a weed too much. See what that went like? Lovely and clean, perfect. Right. Boom. Right, number one's out. Right, next one. Oh, that cracked down. See how close you are together. Oh yeah, they're nice and close. Cool. Right, we've got rods fishing. Job done. Just need to catch one now. I'm essentially using, again, a scaled down mix. So scaled down as in scaled down from like carpin. So I've basically got some little eight mil boilies, a couple of little 12 mil boilies. I've got some four mil pellet, a little bit of sweet corn, and then some dead maggots. I've got quite a bit of maggot with me. I'm not going to use anywhere near as much as I've got, but it's always good to have it. And then we need to make sure it is absolutely bang on because it's a very small spot. But luckily it's not too far at all. Is that going under water? Right, one. Just using the um, medium fox bod. I'm not a massive fan of these because they dive quite deep. But I've realised my medium normal spot is in with my other kit. So we have a carping kit and with the uh, long range stuff, which I've been using over this uh, syndicate. So. I have to just make do with this. I've also got a very big spot, but I'm fishing so close in. I do not want to use one of them. Uh, anyway, we're going to put... I might put about 10 out. I've seen a bit of bubbling. Just a bit further out in a spot, which is quite a good sign. It might be where I've led around. I've, I've pulled up some of the weed and it's um, uncovered some food stalls for the old tench. But uh, hopefully they'll be um, they'll be interested in a nice, easy bit of food. Oh, that's way off. Hmm. Which I wasn't too bad. Slightly to the left. You might be here in the background a bit cheering then. Um, England are actually playing at the moment. I'm not gonna lie, I was hoping to uh, get set up before the game got, uh, started as England versus Scotland. In the uh, Euro, obviously, and I was hoping to uh, be set up and be able to watch a bit of it, but obviously I'm out on the bank, I've got to get the rod sorted first. So I might catch a little bit of the second half. I think it's probably Probably half hour into the game at the moment, I reckon. I'm not going to put loads out in one go, so I obviously want to get a bite. I'm not here for that long. Um, I've probably made up way too much bait in advance. I, um, I had the lad today. I had some messages with working, and I was on a day off. So I, um, I went out into the garage with him for a bit, and... Uh, prepped a bit of bait so I didn't have to do it when I got here. That one's not opened, brilliant. Just 
Sue called a kit behind me instead. Oh, that's way off. Oh, that was, that was rubbish. Right, that do. That's more than 10. I think that's probably 12 or 13, but a couple of them didn't go on the money, so. A couple extra just to be on the safe side. Right, job done. Right, now I need to set up the home for the night. And we are fishing. So this is typical, typical thing I do. I'm obviously looking for fish. So I look at the swim, what's in front of me and the spots I need to find. I'm looking for shows, that sort of thing. I don't look at the swim and the fact that there's a puddle there, a puddle there. The actual swim with the rods is very small. So um, where am I gonna put the shelter? Yeah, I think gonna have to try and position it in this gap here in between these two puddles just so I can get out of the uh, out of the bog there's a massive branch going across this bit here so I can't go in there and it's not really wide enough so I think the only bit I've got is literally gonna be between these two puddles <laughs> what a brilliant swim so the rods are out a bit of bait over them got the house set up I am now settled just cooked up a bit of food, got a lovely beef lasagna, and you might be able to hear what England playing Scotland live. I could say we uh, we could probably do a trying a bit harder at the moment, but um, I think Scotland putting up a pretty good account for themselves. But um, I think it's quite equal. But anyway. Um, I've seen a little bit of fizzing near the spot already, which is a nice sign. Ooh, Scotland only got one in. Um, yeah, I've seen a little bit of fizzing. Um, there's been a guy on the far bank. Not quite sure what he's doing. I assume he's set up over there, but I've seen a little bit of bait going on on the edge of one of the marginal trees. But um, there's a lot of what looks to be overhanging features and snags over that side. Um, I didn't really do a full lap. I basically just, and then a couple of swims along here and off of the, um, the bank where the winds go in, I just sort of had a quick walk along, just watched the water for a bit and I could just see so much fizzing in this swim that I've got in. It's literally one of the first swims you come to, but there's so much fizzing here and the um, the wind's coming in here, which is absolutely perfect. If, if you want something to go on and you've not seen anything visually, then the, um, where the wind is pushing and by that I mean the whichever direction the wind is going in towards is always a good place to have a look because the fish can follow the wind especially when there's no pressure I don't think this lake gets fished as heavily as say the main lake uh, I mean there's only maybe two or three of us on here at the moment so um, if the wind's pushing into particular area and it's kind of coming into this corner into this area in front of me where I am um, it could potentially move the fish in here so it's always something to go off of if you haven't seen any fish as such then just look at maybe the conditions look at where the winds go in um, either on the wind itself or right on the back of it so the opposite end to where the wind's pushing in those tend to be the best sort of zones to look initially so with tench it's a little bit different to carp carp tend to be a lot more pressured tench don't tend to get the same pressure as what carp do so they tend to be a bit more readily um, sort of not so um, they're a bit more inclined to have a feed a bit more inclined to show they seem to give themselves away a lot more because they're, they're not fish one the same way as carp are but, um, anyway I'm going to stop talking watch the footy and finish my lasagna and hopefully I'll be next updating you with a fish well, hopefully you can see them alright but um, I finally got my quarry not a big one at all. But there we go. It's actually my fourth bite. Would you believe three of them have dropped off? Got no idea why. I've done a couple of rig changes and 
we've got one in the net. But uh, he's probably about four pound, maybe four and a half. But um, yeah, nice to get a bite. It's about time to get in the bag now anyway. So um, if I get a few more, I will show you them. But um, yeah, nice to get a fish finally on the bank. Our intended quarry that is the tench ticked off. But I should probably be on about four. But um, nice anyway. Happy days. Right, there's number two. I just got into the bag. It's just sort of settling. And when the rods has gone off again, got into the weed, managed to bully him through, and then the net. Another one about the same size. I'm not going to bother setting up the camera and doing anything like that because it's a lot of messing around for a fish of this size. If I get a decent one, then I will. But um, yeah, nice to get another bite anyway. I think there might be a few more, but you never know, it could go quiet, but um, hopefully i get a few in the morning so I can get some decent shots of them. But uh, yeah, it looks like the rig change is working, so we'll get her back and uh, see if we can get a couple more. Right, there's number three. This one just woke me up out of a lovely sleep. I'm not going to put the rod back out for now, I'm going to leave it on the rod rest. Get another couple of hours sleep and then put it back out in the light and then we'll try and have a few in the morning before I have to go but yeah lovely fish a bit small than this one nice to be getting a couple of bites right morning so it was a pretty productive night in the end I ended up having three tench um, nothing very big but nice to get some bites unfortunately I lost three or four before I caught those three and um, I think the original rigs that I put on which is too small in the weedy conditions. Now, um, I ended up tying up a couple of different rigs, slightly bigger hooks, and that meant I actually then got some decent hook holes and put them in the net. I also switched one of the rods over to a solid bag because it's a absolute confident rig. I know it does the job perfectly, and yeah, I ended up needing one on a solid bag. Um, I ended up reading the rods in at about half three, four o'clock in the morning after having about, what, six or seven bites from... Um, it was a oh, what time did I have my first bite? Maybe about 12 o'clock, I think it was. Um, after having my first bite around that sort of time, obviously I was pretty knackered, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't really get much sleep, so I've got to go to work later on and um, I needed to be sort of a bit with it, so um, I decided to bring the rods in so I could get a few hours sleep. So I basically slept all the way from uh, sort of half three, four o'clock-ish, all the way through to eight. So it gave me sort of four hours at least, um, or thereabouts, of sleep. So I've not really been fishing um, the sort of morning, which, to be fair, it would have probably been one of the most productive bits of the day. But I wasn't, I wasn't really expecting to get so many bites in the night. But um, anyway, I'm gonna just put a little bit of bait out. I've um, put a couple of spots out already, and then realised I could probably do a doing a morning update. So I'm gonna just put another couple out. Now, I've actually not got too long left if i'm honest because i've got work later on this evening and um i've also promised the missus that i will do the um garden fence because some of the panels need replacing so my mates meant to be come over about midday so um i need to get home in time to sort that out so uh i'm gonna probably get on the road about half ten so that means I've got a couple of hours so um, in that time I need to have some breakfast and I'll get everything packed down so my plan is just put one more spot out okay, some of these old casters that are in there are floating um, so I've put about six or seven extra spots out now to try and get them grubbing around. And um, yeah, the plan is basically pack everything, have some breakfast, pack everything down, and have everything on the barrow ready to go, and then just fish right up to right up until the death. And hopefully we uh, we can have another couple at least before we go. It'd be nice to get one in the day. 
in the daylight so that I can actually show you it. But um, I've actually got through quite a bit of bait. But uh, anyway, that's the plan. So um, I'm going to go and put the kettle on, have some breakfast, and hopefully we get disturbed by fish. So while I'm waiting for the kettle to boil to have a coffee, I thought I'd show you the difference in the rigs. So this is the first rig that I used, which was a, a four inch um, Guru hook link. So these are like the pre-tied ones. And on there I've got a size 12 hook, knotless knotted to what is that 12 pound monofilament. Now, if you look at the way that sits, I think it looks absolutely fine. I do a close up of it, but clearly the fish were picking it up, bolting, and then shaking their head, and that was just coming straight out. So, to try and uh, get around that, I obviously wanted to change the rig. So what I did was just tied up some traditional hair rigs on some mono, um, but I used a size eight carp hook instead of your, um, obviously a smaller sort of size 12s. Um, so it's basically exactly the same style rig, um, but the difference is I'm using a much bigger hook. So it just means that when the fish get nailed, there's less chance of them getting rid of it and shaking it out. So um, it worked anyway because it converted a couple of fish on the bank. Um, and then I actually swapped one of them over to a solid bag. And inside there, those have got size 8 hooks as well. So clearly it was the, si the size of the hook was too small and I needed to make that change. So it definitely pays if you, if you drop the odd fish off whether you're fishing for tench fishing, carp fishing, fishing for whatever, it does pay to, um, to tweak your rigs a little. You don't have to change the rig completely. So don't go from a pop-up, well, you could go from a pop-up to a bottom bait if you're losing fish, because potentially they, they might be dropping off because they're not nailing it properly because the pop-up's off the bottom and you're fishing on the deck. But before you start messing around with things like that, just think to yourself, why am I, why am I dropping them off? And just tweak your rig slightly it could be the length of the hook length so it could be that your hook length's too long or too small and so it's not hooking the fish properly so just slightly lengthen your hook length if that doesn't work just slightly lengthen your hair change your hair potentially just try and try and look at the way that the fish are getting hooked if you're getting them on the bank if they're getting sort of slightly dodgy hook holds then try and think to yourself why is that happening if you're just straight up dropping fish off straight away i would always look at just changing the size of the hook so I wouldn't change the rig itself, I would just change the size of the hook because it could just be that the hook's not that, not quite big enough to be able to get them through that situation. So it's worth, um, it's a bit of food for thought anyway um, in, in your rigs. Just make sure if you are dropping fish off, then think about changing the hook size first, then possibly changing the length of the rig, shortening it, lengthening it. Then, if that's not working, try a different rig. It might just be that that rig that you're using just isn't the one for that particular day and the fish are managing to get rid of it. So anyway, a little bit of food for thought, like I said. Hopefully it helps you, but um, yeah, that is the rig that ended up doing the business. Right, there she is in all glory, the Nash Power Barrow, absolute mega bit of kit. I really, really highly recommend you to get one of these if you can, it really makes a difference. This place is um, not, not the hardest place to get around, but you've got loads of roots along here and a lot of water collected in places and if you were using a normal barrow it does take a little bit of graft trying to get them around I've done it for many 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 years and it is really nice to have a little bit of help battery is a little bit low at the moment so I forgot the charger like she's saying full but she was on amber a minute ago and um yeah mega bit of kit can obviously carry loads of kit on there I've got the um avid benchmark x which is a huge huge bench air and I got it because I can now carry it with ease and sleep nice and comfortably if nothing's happening. I've got the um, Cyprinus Typhoon Max Headroom, which is a pretty big bivvy, but also packs down nice and compact and um, quick to set up. And as you can see, I've got all the other kit loaded up on there. So um, I've got the rear, rear barrow bag tucked in there, which is where most of my um, main sort of terminal tackle goes, so it's easy to access. And then I've got a bit of bait in there, generally speaking, it's just food, a bit of spare clothing. Um, I've got a few bits and bobs in that one. The other side is exactly the same. I've got the water butt in there. 
and um, that's about it. That's all. The, that's all I need really. You've got a thinking angler's um, waterproof cover on there, just in case it starts raining. It keeps the bed nice and dry. Um, you can easily put buckets on the handles. You can get outriggers. I did buy them, but I've not used them because it is absolute solid bit of kit, and you can easily put a bucket on there, a bucket on here, and also you're not holding the weight because you've got the rear legs anyway, so it doesn't really matter to be honest. I've got my separate bag which I carry on my back which has got my camera kit in that's one of the Fox Rage bags it's actually a lure bag but it works perfectly for the camera kit and um, yeah that is the setup in case anyone's ever wondered what I use and what I, what I uh, do I've had a the two, few guys stop me as they've chatted and they've had a look at it because they've um, seen it obviously about so I did show them it how, um, how good it is it's a lovely bit of kit but um, yeah that is the Power Barrow obviously the wheel has got the motor and everything in it above that you've got a little compartment that sits above the wheel where the batteries and everything go I pretty much just leave everything in there and then I just take them out as when I need to charge them and um, yeah that is it absolute mega bit of kit um, one thing I would say is um, it's obviously quite a bit of money I actually bring a heavy duty cable with me which we'd use for locking up expensive bikes and I actually lock it up at night I am um, attach it to either a solid structure like a tree or something like that or my bed chair something that I can lock it up to because it is an expensive bit of kit and there's been a few I've heard a few uh, stories of people having their having their kit nicked and that so I wouldn't want anyone to go wandering off with it in the night so I do lock it up so that no one can take it which I do recommend if you fish sort of day ticket waters or open access venues where people can potentially get in then um, make sure you keep your kit secure and um, don't go making anything easy for anyone because unfortunately there's some proper scumbags out there which will happily walk off with your um, hard earned bit of kit so um anyway that is the power barrow mega mega bit of kit i've used it on the syndicate i've used it on a few different day tickets now and it has made life a lot lot easier you can literally just chuck whatever you want on there i mean i've got i normally bring one tripod i've got my old tripod there which is actually better quality than the new one I've got another tripod sort of buried under here which is what I use now because it's a bit more compact but because I've got the barrel I can bring both of them I have got two cameras I've got this um, camera I'm using at the moment which is a Canon uh, it is actually a vlogging camera and um, I've then got my old S uh, SLR Canon SLR which um, I've been using for a, a long time but um, it just obviously means I can film more film a bit better and um, produce some better videos but there you go that is it if you want to know any questions or if you've got uh, anything you want answered then um, just send me a message or drop a comment in the video below in the uh, comments and I'll try and ans ask her, uh, answer it for you but uh, yeah that is it mega mega bit of kit and um, yeah it's really good this um, this here the only issue I've had well, I've had a couple of issues first one was this doesn't come fixed I think it's so that you can choose where you have it but when I first bought it this was loose so when I was trying to push the lever down it was basically rotating back and I was almost not be, not able to reach it with my finger so there's a little screw thread up inside here which you need to tighten up basically um, if you don't it moves around so I've basically pushed it all the way to the top locked it in and that way when I push it down it doesn't go anywhere and you can actually hold you can actually hold it like that push it down all the way to the bottom with your handle uh, with your hand still firmly on the grip it's nice and comfortable I'll be honest this barrow is so good loaded up like that you can literally push it like that and it will take your kit along you haven't even got to hold the thing it is that that good at doing its job um, obviously you need to guide it a bit over rough terrain one thing I have um, had a problem with which I've had to contact um, Nash about is um, it pulls slightly to the right I've heard it's a little bit of an issue they've had I don't know why but um, I've heard they've had a little bit of an issue um, with them pulling to the right every every now and then they get one that um, isn't aligned I don't think um, I'm not quite sure what it is I took it back to where I bought it from which is Brist Brist Angling Centre they had a look at it they confirmed there was definitely something wrong with it so I'm actually waiting another one um, they're gonna they're gonna replace it once they get some more in stock I think they're a bit low on stock at the moment but um seems to be the, the case everywhere at the moment but yeah that's the uh, that is the Nash Barrow mega mega bit of kit if you're interested in buying one I highly recommend making the investment it is really really good 
Oh, I love a coffee. All right, second one in a day. So I've pretty much got everything packed down on the old barrow. And um, that's going to make life easy getting home, the old Nash pa uh, para barrow. I've got a little bit of stuff out. I've still got to brew it out because I've just made myself a drink. But I'm going to be packing all that down now, putting it onto the barrow, and then pretty much reeling in the rods. Now, absolutely nothing has happened this morning. I'm really surprised. I thought it was going to have a couple of bites, but it seems the fish have possibly moved off or just aren't feeding in the daytime, I don't know. But um, I'm a little bit frustrated in a way, but I needed to get some sleep, so I had to bring the rods in in the early hours because I need to get some sleep. I've got work later on, and so I didn't want to be uh, going to work feeling like death just for the sake of catching a couple of sort of four or five pound tench. So um would have been nice to get, get a bigger one but um i don't know if there's any sort of real big fish in here my syndicate's got plenty of good ones in it and at some point it will have a go um for the tench on there and try and catch them by design as opposed to just on the carp rods but um anyway it's been nice i wish i changed my tactics um earlier and didn't lose sort of three or four before i decided to swap over i should have just swapped over after the second loss um definitely a little bit of a fail there for me but it's just how it is um i i you know it's one of those things where you think something's not right but then again was it just one of those things where they've dropped off you just don't know sometimes but i should have reacted to it quicker and changed um changed the rigs over and i would have had a, a few more on the bank but um anyway it was nice i had three so can't knock that it was um it was a nice little session um so yeah that's about it really um I don't know when I'm going to be back out again soon. It's nice to get these little trips in, little overnighters and that. It's definitely um, a bit easier at the moment with the li little one, um, being able to just slot in a, an overnight here and there. But um, I've got to get going because I've obviously got to do a bit of work before. Um, I've got to do a few jobs at home before going to work. But um, anyway, I don't want to bore you with that. But um, hopefully you like the video. If, you, um, if you're looking at going tench fishing, and you generally go carp fishing then what i would say is just scale down the tactics scale down the rigs scale down your lead size scale down your hook size um same sort of tactics for carp do work for tench but all i would say is try and scale everything down so don't put too many big items in your mix um definitely use the maggots they absolutely love maggots so i tend to use a bit of pellet a bit of hemp a bit of corn few handfuls of body not a lot and try and keep them small i use some eight millers 12 mil 10 mil good and then obviously make sure you've got plenty of maggot in there because they absolutely love it if you want to sort of try um a little bit harder then worms are really good i did bring some worms with me but i didn't have time to get around to using them to be honest um, worms are a really effective bait for the tench and um and that's it really just scale it down fish in the same way two or three rods on a spot a little bit of bait over them little and often and the tench will come along and then just keep feeding them as you would with carp it's very very similar the difference is the reason most carp anglers don't really catch many tench we catch the odd one but they tend to be bigger the reason we don't catch many is because the rigs we use just aren't really adequate for hooking them a lot of the time we're trying to avoid fish like that to try and catch carp so you need to adapt your rig and um definitely your hook size to um be able to actually catch them but um anyway that is the video i'm probably going to be packing everything down now and going so hope you like the video if you do remember to subscribe to the channel and follow us also on our social media so facebook and instagram um they'll be showing up down here at the fishing bloggers check us out on there because i put different content on there also more regular content on there because it's obviously to hand i can put stuff on there really quickly hugh updates it quite a bit as well so there's a lot more sort of daily stuff going on on there so check that out and um, anyway, until next time, get out, catch yourself a few tench. If you're going carping, hope you have a few. And um, we'll see you back out on the bank again soon. If you're getting out, be lucky. I better pack up. <laughs>